Hi, welcome to another keynote tutorial. Uh, as you may know, Microsoft just recently introduced a new addition to its PowerPoint software called Morph. Now, if you've been around Keynote for a long time and you've had a chance to look at Morph, you'll know that Morph is basically Keynote's magic move, which Keynote introduced in 2009 uh, when Phil Schiller updated for the first time in quite some time uh, Keynote. And uh, magic move is one of those most underestimated parts of, uh, of Keynote. And uh, it enables you to do things over two slides, which may have required you on one slide to have multiple builds. And I'm going to show you how to do it effectively uh, and duplicate an effect that you often see uh, amongst designers where they have a, a form of parallax or movement where things move around. To achieve the result I want to do, I'm going to have to go outside Keynote, which is what I'm loath to do, and use a special software uh, which will enable me to really do some magical effects. Not expensive software. Let me show you what we're going to be doing. Uh, this is the picture that I'm going to be using. And here's the effect I'm going to try and do. We have a girl suspended above a, uh, a, uh, a floorboard with balloons. And what I want to do is ascend above the floorboards. Watch how it looks. This is the effect that we're going to be aiming for. So she's floating there and then all of a sudden she goes up and the shadow that she casts also changes. Watch again as she goes up. And so you might ask, well, what's so special about that? And what's so special is, of course, is that, well, how would you ordinarily do that um, by just sort of cutting around her and just making her go up? But that leaves a great hole in the floor underneath. So I want to show you some of Kino's special features that will enable you to do the sort of masking that um, software like After Effects and Motion can do. Um, but it's a steep learning curve. You've got to know what you're doing. And Kino can let you do this, albeit not as perfectly as the other ones. But for a 10 buck piece of software, it's not too bad in a pinch. So let's uh, have a look and I'll show you how I did this. Now, let's go into our Keynote. And here is the original diagram as you can see it. I'm going to grab the draw with a pen, which is what I've been demonstrating lately. And we're just going to outline the young floating woman. Okay, it doesn't have to be the most perfect of outlines, but this is going to enable us to duplicate her. We're going to actually grab just her off this image. And that's why I'm creating an outline. Um, I'll speed it up a little bit because uh, it'll take too long if I do it in real time. So I'm just speeding this up now. And um, uh, you'll be able to tidy up a lot of these lines. You can see here how you can push them in if you're not quite there. Uh, where there's black here, it's not so important. If there was a background image, uh, it would be more important to be really accurate. So let's go a little bit closer because we've got these... There we are. I'll just push her in the toes a little bit or her instep, uh, and it's going to get a little bit more precise. Now, one could completely eliminate the balloons uh, and add them in later, but just for the sake of the argument, let's uh, just do all of these outlines of the balloon. Um, it doesn't have to be perfectly curvy. We're going to add the curves a little bit later. So let's speed things up, and around we go around her heels and around her body. And there we go. Where the black is, it's not so important to be perfect. Of course, you, you should use the zoom to get closer in for really little uh, niggly areas, um, which could be the difference between believable and not believable. So there we come. And we'll just do the outline of her hair around her fingers. This little area is quite important. And join up, boom. And there we go. Now, What's interesting is that this is not particularly curvy, it's very angular. And in my last demo, I showed you how to smooth things out. So I'm just going to highlight those dots in the outline that I want to make smooth. So only those will become smooth and all the other lines won't. And that's why you highlight it. Okay, boom, that last one as well. And go up to um, your format go up to shapes and lines, make smooth, and just those ones 
uh, become smooth, which is really nifty. You've got to do a little bit of post-production work here um, just to get the outline done correctly, which is quite important. Um, where there's black, it's not so important. Uh, a couple of little things to do. Uh, and we're going to do the same thing now on uh, the other set of balloons. Just highlight the things that we want to smooth out. I didn't do too bad a job in the first place. Um, one more time, make smooth point. A oh, little bit of a, of a hassle there because of the way that the smooth point worked here. So we're going to have to sort of play with this a little bit and try and straighten it out. Um, yeah, you can add little dots here and just, just get it as straight as you can. It's not really going to be that important. There we go, just about there. Good. So now you can see how you've got this uh, outline and a little bit more tidying up to do. There we go. So when you um, click out of there, you've got this blue outline. Let's just go back to so there you go. You can see her whole body has been outlined in, in blue. Uh, and then this comes the part where you're going to mask it with a, with a shape. So we're going to highlight the rest of the photo. There, there, there's just that part that's going to be highlighted. And can you see that both photos are now highlighted? Mask with selection we've chosen, and boom, if we had done here, the background image is gone, and just the part that we've outlined remains, because that's the part that we want to move. Okay? So we just we can just um, duplicate this whole page, and, um, and then highlight her, and then on the second page, what we're going to do is undo the, um, the mask, there we go. And we're back to where we were. So we can just go backwards and forwards between the two pages, or between the two slides, you can see. Background image there. And if we go, and before there was no background image. Oh, I'll just swap these over. Background image, no background image. Background image, no background image. Really handy to be able to learn to do this. Um, so let's go back in. You know what, while we're here, uh, what we can do um, we can also modify the shadow. So let's just move up. Oh, we're just going to move her up a little bit because this is what's going to happen on the second slide, by the way. So if I click Magic Move, I want you to see the, the error that can creep in here. So Magic Move, watch what happens. It becomes a dissolver, so it's kind of lost. And the reason is uh, we need the same image here to be on the first slide. Okay, so I'm going to um, paste it onto the first slide. There we go and drag it over where she was. So now we've got the two images. You already start to see that there's two images there. Of course, we'll get rid of the background image. So now if we do magic move, uh, I think you'll get a much better idea uh, of how this is gonna work. So if you're ready, you can do it in preview mode. There we go, that's what we want. So we want her to fly up and the background is gonna of course fly away. Well, as it turns out, the background is not going to fly away at all. All we wanted here was the was the movement of the girl upwards, which is what we wanted. You could do this with the move build, um, but you'll see why in a moment. It, that's not really the way to go. Now, we need to get rid of her. So we'll just move that copy of her away. But this part of here, we need to get rid of her. So we just have the background, in which case... I'll paste the image from the right over the top of that. And we also want to get rid of the shadow uh, because that should get smaller as she drifts up. The shadow should get smaller, don't you think? So one more time, we'll go back into um, shape uh, with a draw with the pen and we'll do the outline of the shadow. Now, you really should go well outside the shadow, otherwise it'll be too sharp. And I think that's what you're going to see down the track. Um, I should have gone right outside of the shadow. Uh, because as you can see at the edges, the shadow is quite fuzzy and not sharp. And that can spoil the effect. And uh, you'll get to see that. But when you do this properly, and I'm in a bit of a hurry to do this, um, you want to be kind of outside on the edge of the shadow to the outside, not the inside of the shadow as I'm doing. So here we go. Just join it up now and finish it off. Boom. And we're going to do the same process as we did to get the outline of the young woman. Uh, there it is there. We've got the outline. And what you want to do is highlight that. Highlight the picture. Now you can see both pictures 
both elements have been highlighted. We go back up to our menu um, and we do the uh, format image mask with selection, hit the done and boom, we capture just the shadow. Okay. And uh, we can paste that in now. There we go. So now we've just got the shadow there. And so we've now got these two separate images. Okay. There's the young lady there over the top. That works well. And uh, we, uh, we also have a shadow that's in there uh, in addition. Now we need to get rid of her completely uh, so that the second image on the right just of the girl alone floats upwards. So we need to go out of Keynote just for a moment and let me introduce you to another piece of software uh, that I like to use called Snap Heal, which comes from a company called MacFun. And I've used this quite a lot. There's a uh, cheap version, a free version, then there's the pro version. I have the pro version, I bought as part of a package. Uh, this is the opening slide, check tips and launch. It gives you all sorts of little handy hints as to what to do. But let me show you what we're going to happen. You have a drag your image here. Here's the original image that I downloaded from the web that we've been working with. You'll see now. And there's that's the original image that we've been playing with, untouched. We have a drawing pen or a paintbrush. And we're now going to paint, having chosen the diameter. You can see it says 15 chosen the diameter and we're just going to draw over here there's a few other things you can do as well with this software you can clone and make duplicates all we want to do is color her in in this red and what the software is going to do is it's going to interpolate what's underneath her and fill in the gap when we get rid of her so watch what happens here um, where there's black would have to be so accurate where there's an image underneath, as in the floorboards, you want to be a little bit more careful. Okay, so I'm just going to color all of this in, speed it all up. There we go. Get the hair in. There's a little bit of a gap there, but it's not such a big deal. Don't worry about it. Okay, great. Now we hit the we're going to hit the erase button. Watch what happens. It spends a little bit of time. Da 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 da. And then watch what happens. She disappears. And it's interpolated the area around her. And so I've got my floor still. Now the shadow's also there. So it would be wise, don't you think, to get rid of the shadow. And that's what I'm about to do. So let's get rid of the shadow. And again, the, um, the software will interpolate what that would look like, judging by what's around it. And we'll get rid of the shadow what we don't want is, is an area that's recognizable as a shadow because we've got we've already created a, a new shadow. So let's just color this part in. There we go, be a bit more accurate there. And color this part in too. And now we'll go up to erase and we'll get rid of this. Boom. And there we go. That's definitely not a shadow. So we're going to um, uh, grab this image, simply a copy uh, the image. You can send it off to yourself and to a Dropbox account and pop back in over here and paste it in. Uh, here's the original image again. Here is the shadow. And so let's paste in the image. Bingo. That's not too bad. So that's the image without the young lady. So now on the right hand side, you have the two separate images. So we're going to stretch out um, the new drawing. Not quite the format that I wanted. So we're going to have to go into format and do a little bit of stretching around, make sure it's highlighted, uh, unconstrained the proportions, drag it around so that it sits where we want it to. That's great. Excellent. Okay. Doesn't matter that there's an image underneath there. Uh, at all. Okay, you can see there's the image underneath. Uh, if I'm changing the opacity of the new image that I've created. Excellent. So we can put her over there and let's put the shadow in there. Wonderful. 
that's looking quite good. Yep, that looks fine. And we also need to get rid of the image that's behind there. Uh, get rid of get rid of that. Okay. So we'll um, bring the opacity. There we are. So that image is now in front. Good. That's that's the image where we got rid of the girl. There we go. So let's put the shadows back in place again. Let's grab our young lady from one of the previous slides where we created her. I'll just stretch the um, the shadow out a little bit. Uh, there, that's good. Let's grab the young lady as the separate image. There she is dangling there. Copy her, paste her in. Cool. Make her a little bit bigger. There we go. Now you can see where my imperfect outlining of her, there's a bit of a black shadow around her. But you know what? Most people aren't going to notice it. Um, you can be more dainty with your outlining if you feel like it. So, so far, so good. Now we want to duplicate. Yeah, we want to duplicate this slide because that's the one we're going to do the magic move on. So let's duplicate the slide. There we go. Let's move her into where she's going to float off to. Up she goes, up she goes. And of course, as she goes up, her shadow is going to get smaller. And that's just a little bit of embellishment just to make sure that the audience is somewhat deceived. Now we're going to add the magic move effect. And there she goes. She floats up. Let's have a look at it full screen. I've just changed the uh, duration. Up she goes. Full screen. When you're ready. <laughs> She's going to float up. Off she goes. And the shadow gets smaller. So this is the magic move in action to give us a sort of a three a 2D effect. So we've created, we've taken one static picture and we've created motion on top of it. And that um, is a form of morphing as PowerPoint would call it. But of course in Kinet we've done it for a while. Why don't we make her smaller? So not just as she float up, but she floats away. And of course the shadow itself too um, has to float away and get out of the way. So let's try this now uh, with magic move. Off we go. So she floats up and recedes into the background as the shadow gets smaller. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, this is uh, Magic Move in Action. It's been around in Keynote since 2009. Glad to see that PowerPoint is deciding that visual is the better way to go to tell a story rather than text. Let's hope that other people catch on. Bye for now.